It looks fairly deserted at this stage, but for two and a half hours tomorrow afternoon, this is going to be mecca for about 40,000 West Australian sporting fans. They'll pay money to crowd into the outskirts of this oval, standing cramped shoulder to shoulder, just to watch 40 perspiring, superbly fit young men kick a leather bag at each other. And all for the honour of holding on to a silver cup for the next 12 months and flying a flag above your grandstand. For the champions Perth and the challengers East Perth, tomorrow marks the culmination of 12 months' effort. For the winners, it's into the record books as the 1978 premiers. And for the also rands, well, no one claps losers. And no one knows that better than the two coaches concerned. Perth's Ken Armstrong and East Perth's Barry Cable. Ken, there's been a cloud over some of your players, particularly your big men and now John Quartermain. What's the situation at this stage? Well, uh, we're happy to say, at least with our big players, uh, Chester McKeon, uh, Brian Cook, that they came through a, a very good session last night and they're quite fit. Uh, unfortunately, John Quartermain won't be playing. He sustained a, a pull to the hamstring last night at training. Uh, we've had a closer look at him today and I think he's a very big risk factor and you can't go into a grand final with a risk like that and poor old John misses out. Well, with John out and with Murray Cooper suspended, that's two key positions in your goal-to-goal -goal line that you're missing. Are they going to be difficult holes to fill? Oh, I think when you miss play, you'll obviously miss players of the calibre of uh, Quartermain and Cooper, but uh, we've had these problems throughout the year and we've adequately covered them at other times and I can't see any reason why we won't cover them in a grand final. Well, where in particular do you think that Perth's going to win the game tomorrow? Well, my answer to uh, that question always is around the ground. Uh, I think really when you look at it, and I'm, I'm not evading or trying to come up with uh, what I think might be our, our strong points, but I think our success has been based on a team performance. And I would hope that we can have 18 honest performers uh, on the ground on Saturday, and I'm sure that'll be good enough. Some of the players, including yourself and Phil Kelly, have been under a cloud with injuries in the last few weeks. Are you confident that the 20 players that will run out tomorrow will be 100% fit? Oh, yes. They'll, be, uh, they'll certainly be uh, fit enough to see out the game and play at their top. Has it been a difficult job to choose the 21 players in the list? Yes, it has there? been hard. I guess it's hard for any finals team to pick their top 20. And uh, we've uh, probably got a harder job in the sense that we have the reserves in as well. So we have to pick virtually 40 top players and uh, there's about 50 training so unfortunately 10 will miss out and uh, you know it's very disappointing for those particular players. But where in particular on the ground tomorrow is East Perth going to win? Well I'm certainly hoping that our attitude will be the biggest thing particularly from the second semi we didn't play well and uh, I thought Perth played well but we didn't play well and I think mainly because of our attitude wasn't very good so I'm just hoping tomorrow that uh, our attitude is going to be 100% better than it was in the second semi. By this time tomorrow night it will be all over we'll be toasting the winners and lamenting with the losers. And almost immediately, we'll begin to forget all about it. The 1978 football season will be over. The centre of attention will shift from Robert Wiley and Barry Cable to Graham Wood and Craig Sargent. The talk will be about Sheffield Shield and the coming English cricket tour. But that's only for a few months. We'll come back here in about six months' time and start the whole process over again. This is Brendan Wood at Subiaco Oval.